also global public goods. So many developing countries are raising the question of whether, in fact, we are shortchanging the traditional development agenda by using the same limited pot of ODA for these other uh, equally important but different purposes. Um, that, of course, was part of the conversation in Sharm el Sheikh. It's been a lot of the discussion in the uh, way in which you can mobilize private capital. Bertrand, you have been thinking, Bertrand Badre, you have been thinking about it, acting on these issues for many years. I know you have been recently talking about the outcome of Sharm el Sheikh as well in this. I want to get a little bit your sense on where the debate stands and, and where you think the challenges lie in terms of making progress. Coming back to Aminata's first suggestion that we start sure. looking at how to move to the solutions. Well, so, <coughs> thank you, Masood, and it's great to be here. Thank you, Thierry. Um, yes, it's, uh, we, we discussed that last year already. I think the waters are more troubled even than they were last year, as, as you rightly said in your opening remarks, Thierry. Uh, we are at the moment where, on the one hand, we have a, a, conver there's a convergence of traditional crises, economic crisis, social crisis, energy crisis, etc., and also an underlying transformation of many things. And the combination of this crisis and transformation is pretty difficult to handle. Transformation are geopolitical, I mean the decarbonization of our economy, what's being discussed in Montreal starting today on biodiversity. Uh, of course, there's the technological changes and AI. I mean, all these things are, are, are making this puzzle a little bit difficult <coughs> to apprehend. Uh, on top of that, we have, and this is really what matters in what you said, this uh, growing tension between, I would say, the north and the south, or maybe the west and the south, let me put it this way. Uh, we've seen that with the vaccines, we've seen that with the de debate on, on you, you know this, Madame Touré, on the gas in Africa. Uh, two years ago it was bad to finance gas, now we have a little gas problem, so we turn back to Africa and say maybe we should reopen the door. Uh, we, we have also these tensions on demography. On the one hand, we have this demographic push, we are an aging world, and uh, I've read some papers on the uh, Europe. European demography and the needs to open to migration, to migrations, and on the other end, people don't want migrations. So all this makes this a, a little bit difficult. On top of that, you have what Mr. Macron has called the two elephants. You have the China and, uh, and the U.S., which are two elephants fighting each other, and they don't care about what's around the elephants. So we, we are in a world where, on top of that, and this is really a concern to me, we, we are trying to develop a new sets of norms and standards, and in particular, seen from Europe. Uh, we develop everything which is connected to ESG and impact and, and, and a new way uh, to discuss sustainable finance, sustainable investment, which I think is, is well intentioned, and I, I've, I've been supporting that for ages, but which, which is also uh, increasing the gap between several parts of the world. Sometimes when I want to be provocative, I say, I don't want Europe to become Boboland, you know, where we're very nice and cozy between us and we explain to the rest of the world, you should do like us, but it's not working this way. And so that's, that's really where, where, where I want to come from, to come to your questions. Uh, and all of this is also in, in at a moment where I believe, and it's, it's, uh, Jean-Marie tried to mitigate my, my, my feeling, that a lot of people are less and less concerned about what's happening far from them. Uh, m maybe some of you will remember the, the short novel from Voltaire, Candide, uh, 300 years ago, uh, or 250 years ago, uh, which ends by we have to cultivate our garden. Uh, and people, I think, read this literally today. My garden, I mean, the world is too complex. Climate, too big. Refugees, too big. Cybersecurity, too big. I, I just can't handle this, so I'm taking care of my garden, literally understood, you know, with fences. And if I do take care of my garden, the world will be okay. The problem is that I think both Voltaire and us today should not think about the garden as a closed, ring-fenced area, but as our planet. And how do we move from the garden to the planet and back and forth? And that's, that's really where we are today. And I think it's, it's very difficult, including from a private sector perspective, because now your garden is yielding more money. Two years ago, when you put your money at home, you got zero. Now you got 4%. So why should I go to Africa if I can get 4% at home? So everything is converging uh, in that direction. So I think we, are, we have to really uh, take into account a number of avenues to explore, and, and, and the sooner the better. And that's probably what President Macron has in mind when he's convening this summit in June on resetting the relationship with the Global South. I think there is one avenue which has been discussed for ages, 
and uh, you, you mentioned it, which is uh, the Security Council, the Bretton Woods system, etc. I mean, of course, it must be discussed, and as French, we probably have more to lose than others. Uh, I think it's difficult, but it's, it needs to be put on the table, definitely. Then we, we also have to put on the table the use of uh, new financing. I mean, you've, you've mentioned, you've hinted at the SDR. Uh, what can we do with the SDR? This is real money that can be created and distributed and leveraged accordingly. Uh, and this is taking time, it's difficult, but we have to put this on the table. We also have to look at the IDA. Uh, IDA is, is a concessional money from the World Bank Group. Uh, we need to do more. I've tried when I was there to do more. We can leverage IDA. There are hundreds of billions which are available there, provided we show a little bit of courage and in, uh, imagination. We have, and I've, I've said this many times, we have to have the development institutions work together as a system. Everybody is working in its silos. They don't want to cooperate. They compete with each other. Let's face it. So here again, it's not so much a shareholders and the institution. It's a system together. So I think we have ample resources at, at our at our hands that we don't use for, for a number of, of reasons. So I think this is more, more act actionable than to just say, let's reform Bretton Woods. There is money that we can mobilize. I think, and, and maybe Maurice will remember that, uh, 20 years ago with President Chirac, we worked on new innovative mechanism. President Chirac had a good formula. He said, globalization should pay for globalization. I think it's, it's a way, and this, we, we created 20 years ago the tax on plane tickets to finance unit aid, medical research. I think we have to find new global resources. That's a nice way to uni unite people. Maybe it, it, it's a tax, and I know when French people so to speak about tax, they, it's always <laughs> suspicious. Uh, <laughs> but maybe tax on extractive, uh, extractive industries, maybe tax on carbon. I, I have no idea. But find some things that put us in the same boat and that, that guarantees some flow of money over the years, not dependent on, on the will of parliaments year after year after year. So I think we have to work in that direction. And that's probably also a way uh, to work on global public goods as well. I think we, we also have to uh, develop new instruments. I mean, you mentioned some of them. Uh, the question is not to, to, to move money from one pot to the other with the same amount of money. But I think we have to redesign uh, our, our ODA in an appropriate manner. I mean, we, we talk about uh, public goods, we don't do much about this. And it's true that if you tell the, the development institution, oh, you have to finance public goods, they will take money out of the bilateral aid to public goods. And then people will be angry, and, uh, and rightly so. Uh, and then comes the mobilization of the private sector, which is extremely dear to my heart. It's more and more difficult because precisely of the, what I mentioned, the financial conditions have changed. The interest of people has changed. They are less interested in emerging market and developing economies. It's more risky. It's far away. My, um, some people told me my clients don't want their money to be sent so far away. They want their money to be used in France, in the US, America first. That is true. So how do we, do, do we really find a way to mobilize? And I think it's... it's now is the time to address all types of issues which have been known for ages. I mean, I've, I've participated to hundreds of panels on mobilizing private money, on blended finance, on public-private cooperation. We know all the solutions, so don't, we don't need another one, but we really need to say, okay, what are the technical obstacles? I mean, there are technical obstacles regarding the definition of ODA. How do you take into account guarantees? Guarantees are not taken into account in ODA, and, and, and we need, I mean, with guarantees, you can leverage more money than by direct transfer. That, that's, again, I don't want to be boring, but that's one, one idea. You have to do look at uh, the Basel III constraints. You have to look at the Solvency II constraints. You have to take them one by one. What are the obstacles? And then you have to really make a push, the cultural issue. It is important. We will not win the climate battle in Paris, Brussels, or Washington. We will win the climate battle in Lagos, Delhi, and Bogota. So if we want to get that battle won, we have to transfer the money and the skills, etc. If we don't do it, we're going to lose it. That's what I call the, the billion student. We have to really shift the needle and go in, in that direction. I think it's extremely important. Uh, and we have also to make sure that the, the, the development institutions agree that the key uh, the, the way they should be incentivized, the way they should be assessed is, do they mobilize private money? It is not the case today. It's still marginal. And, and we really have to change that. If we don't change that, private money will not move. Let's face it, there is no incentive whatsoever to move in, in scalable manner. So I think, I don't think uh, we will have a revolution. I think we need a revolution. Uh, that's again my French flavor. Uh, <laughs> 
I don't think we'll get it. Let's face it. We will not reform Bretton Woods this year. We will not find the, the magic system to mobilize private sector. But I think we need a serious evolution. We need to really be serious about this. I'm, I'm really tired of fooling myself with all these conversations. We say, yeah, we should do that, we should do that. And so little is changing. Uh, I, I think, again, we will not find a way to, to, to calm the waters. Uh, but if we can find a way to use a song, build a bridge over the troubled water, <laughs> that would be good enough. Thank you. Very good. So now we have the garden, which we thought we could protect. But actually, as you say, unfortunately, no matter how much you tend your own garden, the forces that are impacting it are global. Uh, and you've identified so a number of technical things could be done. You mentioned SDRs uh, about Two years ago, there was, as many of you know, a big allocation of new SDR, $650 billion. And this is a really remarkable achievement in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, and there was a, dis a big effort to say that apart from the initial allocation, a lot of the SDRs, uh, more than two thirds, went to countries that didn't really need them, rich countries, and they should recycle these SDRs. They should find ways to uh, provide these SDRs to countries that needed the money. And many mechanisms were discussed. Here we are two years later. And the fact of the matter is that while some of those SDRs have moved from the central banks of rich countries to the account of the IMF, not a single SDR has yet reached any poor country two years later. So we have just had a big conversation and a moving of numbers across accounts, but so far, no real transfer has taken place. 